This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Man, I've waited a while to say this. Our upcoming cons are... Too many games at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center, October 8th to 10th. Wizard World Chicago, Donald E. Stevens Convention Center, October 15th to the 17th. Look for us in the Artist Alley, we're gonna do something a little different, we're gonna do terrible caricatures of everybody, so drop on by. Grand Rapids Comic Con, the Devo's Place Grand Rapids, November 12th to the 14th. And finally, C2E2, McCormick Place in Chicago, December 10th to the 12th. We're gonna have a booth at all of them, so drop on by, say hello, we're so excited to be back, man, can't wait to see you. Disagree. I think I'm wearing her down. Correct. That's what you are, Ipkiss. A big- Aren't you due back in the laboratory to get your bolts tightened? I should have said that. Correct. Critic, what's the point of this? The point is to win and you're doing terrible. I have no interest in showing off how well I know the mask. And that's why you're losing. Continue, Tamara. Our- Love is like a red, red rose. And I am a little thorny. Correct. Shoot the door. Shoot the door. Shoot the window. I don't get- Correct. Please, I want to eat. No food for either of you until we go through every single line. Don't worry, I ate my words when I said this game sounds like fun. Screw it, I'm going to make myself a sandwich. Uh, I wouldn't do that, Malcolm. I really wouldn't. And what the hell are you gonna do? Malcolm, don't tempt him! You're gonna regret it, buddy. I'm making myself a sandwich. This is your last chance. Don't be a fool, Malcolm! I don't think you can do a thing! Well then go ahead. Go and make yourself a sandwich. He's right, I got nothing. Okay, I did this to show I really was obsessed with the mask growing up. I know I'm not the only one. Centered around an odd plasticine cartoon character who puts on a mask, this film was the first time state-of-the-art CG effects were used to blend real life and cartoons as opposed to make dinosaurs or aliens come to life. When the trailer came out, people, particularly kids, were so excited that someone finally got the idea to use this technology in a zany way. And of course, this wacky take on technology is used everywhere today, even in commercials. It also helped that they got the rapidly rising star of Jim Carrey and the first appearance of Cameron Diaz as well. Years later, people still look at this film as a fun, wild, nostalgic throwback. Before the dark time. But I wanted to show that even with my obsessive love of this movie, even back then, I still knew it wasn't great. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna pan this film at all. If anything, I'm curious why so much of it still works today, when honestly, a lot of it shouldn't. There's a ton of awkward moments, weird lines, and standard 90s cliches that were pretty formulaic even back then. Yet something about it is still charming, imaginative, and weirdly one of a kind. I guess I wanted to make it clear that even though I adore this movie, I still wanted to look at it objectively, for both its pros and cons. So, now that I think I made my point clear... Hey Critic, want some of these gooey, messy sandwiches? Why yes, that sounds lovely. Let me have it. This is a weirdly anticlimactic episode. Let's take a look at The Mask. I guess I should point out, seeing how I did a whole video on it, that the film is quite different from the comic. The comic is dark, violent, gory as hell, and incredibly mean-spirited. It was fucking great. That's what they wanted to make when they hired director Charles Russell, who brought more comedy to the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, resulting in a big hit. New Line was hoping for The Mask to be the next Freddy Krueger, but as Russell pointed out, we already had a Freddy Krueger. So he pushed to do something lighter, but still relatively new. In fact, for better or worse, this is one of the perfect examples of transitioning from the aggressive R-rated 80s to the light-hearted PG-13-centered 90s. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to see the comic on the big screen now with big budgets trying to be more daring, but in the 90s, I can see why they did something more zany and relaxed. With that said, we open with credits rolling over Edge City, 
which I'm pretty sure is the city from Babe 2, where a scuba diver stumbles across Jumanji but is accidentally taken out, unlocking an ancient mask. Not knowing this yet is Stanley Ipkiss, played of course by Jim Carrey, who got concert tickets for his would-be girlfriend, but she complains she wanted to take her friend with her instead of him. Why don't you just go with your friend? I couldn't do that. No, come on! <laughs> Boy, do I smell chicken, because cock, 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 cock! That was the most sickening display I've ever seen. I disagree. I think I'm wearing her down. Jim Carrey really is the perfect actor to play this role. Not because of his over-the-top flexibility as the mask, though that is certainly important, but because of his likability as Stanley Ipkiss. Most actors, I think, would play this role too boring to contrast the other personality. Carrey himself said he didn't want people fidgeting in their seats saying just get to the mask already. And I still stand by, this is my favorite performance of his, as when he does other roles, it still feels like a performance. A good performance, but still performance. This just feels like how Jim Carrey probably was. A nice, but awkward people pleaser who's very expressive with his face. I also like that he doesn't hold back too much. He's still a little over the top, but in a way you feel like he would be in real life, especially given his obsession with cartoons. I firmly stand by if Ipkiss didn't work, the movie wouldn't work. This is fortunate as he and his comic relief Charlie almost impressively have no chemistry together. Hold the phone. Killer. At three o'clock. I never noticed it before, but these supposed best friends come off more like, well, actors who just met for the first time on set. Tonight, I'm gonna take you on a love safari, deep into the darkest heart of the urban jungle. Tell me more, Buona. They're not awful, they're not even so bad they're funny, they just leave no impression as a comic duo. <sighs> that aged great. Thankfully, the chemistry isn't focused on them as much as Carrie and then former newcomer Cameron Diaz. She plays Tina, a charming singer pretending to open an account when really she's a friend for a mob boss. What does Nico have to say about all this? Things change. First we take the bank, then we take Nico, and then my friend's school is out. I'm sorry, I accidentally put on heat. Peter Green plays a gangster named Dorian, and I'm pretty sure nobody told him this was supposed to be a comedy, because he plays this role like he's still in the usual suspects. Did it look like I had much of a choice? Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. <laughs> Who knows, right? While a part of me does wish he was funnier, it does help offset the goofier moments and give a few more surprises about what's around every corner. Is a scene with a gun gonna be funny or suspenseful? It helps mix things up. Speaking of which, Stanley's repair shop lies about his car being ready, so they give him Fosse Studebaker to go to Dorian's club with his friends. He gets separated from them though and doesn't mix well with security, causing Dorian to say lose him twice. No, but my lose friends him. are on the inside. Lose him. Hey, come on now, guys. He's been talking like that ever since he did that job with Johnny two times. I'm gonna go get the papers, get the papers. Things get worse when a car ruins his suit. Mr. Ipkiss. Did you get my splash? I slipped the driver a 20 to do that. Humiliated at the club, his car breaks down at a bridge where he stumbles across the ancient mask. When he gets home, we see he's quite the cartoon nut, which as I mentioned before is cleverly worked in and arguably does explain his expressive faces. But they're given a massive makeover when he puts on the mask and transforms into the villain from the Care Bears movie. Spoken! So fun fact, Carrie apparently improvised that line as the original was snazzy. Snazzy! I can't even finish it. You know it would suck. <laughs> This is also where we get the intro of the photorealistic cartoon effects, which not only hold up pretty well, all things considered, but Carrie's performance does truly embrace them. This was new territory for effects like this, and he has no idea if they're gonna look good or not. But his acting never shows he has any doubt in them. If he's told his eyes are popping out in a scene, he does his damnedest to act like his eyes are popping out in a scene. <laughs> I thought you'd all like to know, by the way, these scenes have the official Tommy Lee Jones seal of buffoonery he cannot sanction. Get right up here! Don't be shy! Some of these moments are taken directly from the comic, like the balloon animal scene where he makes a Tommy gun, and the revenge he takes on the car mechanics. But instead of having cute little visual jokes on top of the punchline, they just... die. A kid show came from this. Stanley is questioned by both Lieutenant Calloway, played by Peter Rieger, and a reporter named Peggy, played by Amy Yasbeck. May I be of some assistance? Stanley Ipkiss. Oh, hi. This guy exits every scene like he's gonna go jerk off in the corner. 
While interviewing him about the repair shop incident, Peggy discovers that Stanley wrote a letter to her that got published about nice guys finishing last. You really think hundreds of women are looking for a guy like me? Sure, I'm one of them. The film does a real good job making you think Peggy is going to be the wholesome woman Stanley goes with and Tina is going to be the bad girl that ultimately betrays him. Right down to one's a reporter and one's with the mob. This makes the twist all the more funny when you discover it's the other way around. But the movie has to remind you, oh yeah, it's a bizarre crime drama too. The cops uh, tried to shut the club down this morning. Ah! Add a rope with a tennis ball hitting his testicles and this would totally be a James Bond torture. That night, Stanley dreams about how his encounter with Tina might have gone if he was more confident. <gasps> Alright, Miss Diaz, for your first film role, you're gonna take your leading man's head, turn it to the side, and lick his ear like your stardom is deep inside it. You sure this wasn't a Weinstein production? <laughs> This gives him the urge to put on the mask again, but he needs money, so he drops by the bank Dorian's men were robbing that night. <laughs> they have a look like, oh, it's that kind of movie. I thought this was a sequel to Donnie Brasco. He shows up to the club to hear Tina sing, gives one of the few effects that doesn't hold up that great, and dances to the song you're almost all-star sick of, but not quite. I guess this is as good a time as any to say the soundtrack is fucking great. People always single out this and Cuban P, but honestly, every song is really fantastic in this. The director said he wanted the city to really come to life at night as the mask could only come to life at night. So he wanted it to be a very nightclub-centered world. And the music definitely helps that. Combining a strange mix of lounge, swing, and R&B, they surprisingly really go together and help already entertaining scenes explode with even more energy. I mean it, every song in this is hummable as hell. I'll admit some moments I was afraid wouldn't hold up as well as when I first saw them, but for whatever reason, this quote unquote death scene cracks me the hell up. Tell Tony Tim I won't be coming home this Christmas. <laughs> I can't even explain why, maybe because this guy is supposed to look sad that he's dead while Carrie is AGGRESSIVELY manhandling him during his supposed final moments. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the closest to an Oscar he'll ever get. Two of my favorite little add-ons are in this joke. One is Dorian, straightening his hair when he discovers he's suddenly being watched. And the other is Carrie exiting the wrong way, like so many winners do on award shows. Hey, Callaway! Better call that high-priced lawyer of yours, Terrell. You and I are going downtown for a little chat. We just threatened people with guns and fired him in public. He got nothing on us! Once it's revealed that the mask robbed the bank, Dorian is set loose and puts out a hit on the green menace. Fifty grand to the man who finds that green-faced son of a bitch before the cops do. I want you to get the word out to every street hustler, to every low life in this town. I want you to hit up every 90s gangster in black suits driving black cars using this voice! Douglas! What's up? This is the maker! You mean God? No, I'm not sure if our sponsors are cool using that term. Right. You must use stamps.com! Cool. If you got a small business, you know that there's mm -hmm. nothing more valuable yeah, okay. than your time, so oh, stop yeah. wasting it on right, trips okay. to the post office. Oh, stamps.com makes oh, it wow. easy to mail and wow, wow, ship wow. right from your computer. Oh. Send time and money with stamps.com. Oh. Send letters oh, yeah. and packages for right, less awesome. with discounted oh, rates from oh, USPS, wow. UPS, wow, wow, wow. and more. Tell me more, Since maker. 1998, stamps.com has been an indispensable tool for nearly one million businesses. Well, Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service something. and UPS shipping right to your computer. Wow, Whether you're wow, in office wow, sending wow. invoices, a side hustle, Etsy shop, or full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com can make your life easier. Hey, am I right? All you need is a computer and standard printer, no special supplies or equipment? Exactly well done. Within minutes, you're up and running, printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. And you get exclusive discounts on postage and shipping from USPS and UPS? We go! Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop it off. No traffic, no lines, no lines. No lines.
Cool. Cut the confusion out of shipping. With Stamps.com's new rate advisor tool, you can compare shipping rates and timelines to easily find the best option. Well, why don't we save time and money with Stamps.com? Great idea! There's no risk. And with my promo code, Nostalgia, you get a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Nostalgia. That's Stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Nostalgia. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Well, I like to, got a uh -huh. uh, non-denominational maker, and I definitely will. Right after I'm done looking at DraftKings. DraftKings, what's that? You don't know? It's been a great start to the NFL season, and it's only getting better at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Tell me more! Okay, DraftKings is putting new customers in the center of the action with a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Why, can I get in on the action now? Yes, non-denominational maker who's supposed to know everything. It's simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Feel the NFL action like never before with a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Wait, I do remember making this! Yeah, how did you forget that? I also invented bad memory! But DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable! And the best part is you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want! Well, I think the people watching should download the DraftKings app now and use the code CRITIC. This week, new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Just enter code CRITIC to get a free shot at millions in total prizes with your first deposit. That's code CRITIC only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Go to the things we just said. Yeah, check them out. They're pretty cool. visit Stanley to see if he knows anything about the mask, seeing how it was his bank that he robbed. Anyone find out who he is? Why are you interested? Thanks for everything, Stanley. You'd like to see him again, wouldn't you? Anyone else get a serial killer vibe from that look? You'd like to see him again, wouldn't you? He'd like to see you too. All of you. He puts the lotion on his skin! He takes his mask to a professor, played by Ben Stein, who connects it back to the ancient trickster, Loki. Possibly a representation of one of the Norse night gods. Maybe Loki. Who's Loki? Loki is bank. Stein's underacting perfectly offsets Carrie's overacting. And I legit love that nobody figures out because Loki is a night god it would only work at night. So this reaction is always a surprise and gets a big laugh. <laughs> this is why I don't believe in evolution. You have the pickle relish? Doyle, get in the car. But I ordered onion rings. Doyle! I should point out, this is the very sudden beginning of Calloway and his assistant Doyle doing the smart cop, dumb cop routine. At first, Doyle is just a normal guy. He talks with Calloway like anyone else would. Well, we got some fingerprints on some of the currency, but nothing matches Terrell's men. Looks like this guy beat him to the punch. But halfway through, they spontaneously make him a dumbass always getting on Calloway's nerves. It's completely out of nowhere. Doyle! Doyle! Shut up and help me down! Alright. Start dancing, I'll blow your brains out. Wow, you're a real hero. Doyle! It'd be like if Timon and Pumbaa, halfway through Lion King, changed gears and became a no-nonsense cop duo. It'd be out of left field, but kind of funny too. Stanley. Stanley meets Tina at Landfill Park. The city is so close to having a strong identity. But he changes into the mask, much to her... delight? Confusion? Fear? It's a little hard to get a read on her in these scenes. Ipkiss! Police! The cops try to arrest him, but he outsmarts them only to be cornered by a SWAT team. This leads to, let's face it, what you've been humming since you saw the thumbnail for this video. They call me Cuba Pete. I'm the king of a rumba beat. Cuban Pete is one of the catchiest earworms in a soundtrack that already has a lot of earworms. I have to admit though, when I think of pure silly joy in a movie, this sequence always pops in my head. It is the most upbeat, surreal, out-of-nowhere musical number at the time since Deo from Beetlejuice. I feel like if this was done today, they'd do some sort of modern pop song. I really give credit that they stuck with something more traditionally zany. This cop in particular does a really amazing job. Really think about what she has to do. She has to be in cop mode, start singing while in cop mode, get across the singing is against her will, indicate her body is going through the same thing, and then be totally possessed by the mask's powers. All within the span of just five seconds. As well as while a surf ninja poster is staring her in the face. 
I don't know, even if I saw this all going on, I'd still be distracted. What the hell is Surf Ninjas? That we shall try. Just you and I. Oh, and she can dance. For not even having a minute of screen time, that cop leaves quite an impression. <laughs> Stanley finds a corner and takes the mask off. I never understood why. But Peggy is there to help him escape. My life is wrecked. Wrecked. Stanley opens up to Peggy, who at first seems sympathetic, but as mentioned, she was working for Dorian. What are you doing? You really are a great guy. I just can't lose my condo. If it makes you feel any better, Stanley, I don't think sex with her would have worked out anyway. Is this him? Don't mess with me. I got my sideways gunman with me, bro. This is where the movie gets a little dumb. If you're like me, you were excited to see what the mask would do with a criminal like Dorian. Would it make him wild and zany, or would it turn him into some sort of out there monster like in the later comics? Well, it pushes him forward a few feet and just makes him bigger and meaner. What a rush. You okay? Better than ever, you idiot. Dorian with the mask feels like one of the lesser villains from Captain Planet. He says very generic villain lines, does very generic villain stuff. This is your big production number. Just wait! I will be your host for the remainder of the evening. Even the design is kind of lame. He kind of looks like a green version of that Terminator toy when the hair stayed on. Admittedly, though, he does look better than every movie version of the Green Goblin. Back off, Freakazoid! Oh, I should point out, there was a deleted scene that showed Peggy dying, and... Yeah, it was deleted with good reason. <laughs> the guy who did Nightmare 3, you don't say? Dorian drops him off to the cops who put him in jail because... Yeah, he does technically belong there. But he's visited by Tina. Hey, yo, with the face. Before he was a household name, that's how Jim Carrey was referred to. They talk about the power of the mask, what Dorian could do with it, and the special, if not strange, relationship they have together. Thanks. For what? For being the only guy who treated me like a person and not some sort of party favor. Yes, he really loved you for your personality. Okay, to her credit, I think she was talking about him when he wasn't wearing the mask. But that doesn't mean she has to follow all the way through with a kiss. I've got to disappear for a while now, Stanley. Baby, there you are. I needed someone to tell me how stupid my suit was. You playing a little trip without me, baby? No. No? <laughs> Jesus, it's the mask! Peter Green is like, what, I read the comic? Oh, we forgot to have that talk. Um, yes, that's the kind of movie we're making. But it's not. I'm not telling him that, he'll kill me! Stanley uses his dog Milo to get the keys from the cops. And I gotta say, as animal actors go, Milo is one of the best in cinematic history. This dog has so much personality and is so ridiculously well-trained. Put the keys down. And get the keys. Go on. Over there. Over there. If there was, like, an animal Oscars, he would totally get an award that year. Ah! Hold it! Stanley gets out, taking Calloway with him. It may be one of the best Doyle reactions in the movie. Come on! Well, that invites no follow-ups, as Dorian gets revenge on his boss and plans to blow up the nightclub. Blow it! I was talking to her, but that works too. Crap. Stanley is captured, but Tina has a plan of her own. There's no time for last requests. But all I wanted was a kiss. A kiss? I really didn't need to see masked Dorian's thirst face. Nobody ever kissed me like Dorian, Tyrell. You know, I saw this in every Saturday morning show ever made, but I doubt it'll end the same way those did. Oh, crap! <laughs> Milo gets the mask and puts it on. <laughs> this dog is actually such a good actor, no CG was used in the filming of these scenes. <laughs> Stanley gets the mask back on, resulting in a weird jump cut that always drove me a little crazy. Oh Christ, I have seen this film too much. And he uses his power to get rid of the bomb and Dorian as well. That might be the one time Carrie didn't know what face to have for a scene. He has a look like, you took the last French crueler and I am not gonna let you forget about it. He turns back into himself and seems to be off the hook as everyone except Calloway thinks Dorian was the mask all along. 
I want to see you in my office first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, Your Honor. Boy, that doesn't sound good at all. Oh, it doesn't sound good. What would sound good to you? Breakfast. Shut up! They drive to the bridge where the mask was found and decide to get rid of it for good. You sure you know what you're doing, buddy? I'm sure. It's time to give Jamie Kennedy a chance to ruin his career. The mask is tossed over, but not before Charlie goes diving in after it. Snazzy! Yeah, that still would have sounded awful. And that was The Mask. By no means perfect, but the parts that work are insanely likable. A lot of this is around Jim Carrey, both as The Mask, but especially Stanley Ipkiss. He gives an energized yet unique spin on the lovable loser that I feel actors have borrowed from since this film came out. But on top of that, the effects mostly hold up, it's colorful, has a great soundtrack. At times can be awkward, but I feel like that can slide because the film is so focused on giving you a good time. It's a corny, old-fashioned good time, but a good time nonetheless. So whether you obsessed over it like I did when you were a kid, maybe hated it as an adult, or were just indifferent to it, there's definitely stuff about it that's a little clunky, but a lot more that holds real merit. It's never too late to go back and give yourself another smoking good time. Oh yeah, if you're such a super fan of the movie, what friend of Jim Carrey was also considered for the role? What does it matter? Clearly no one would be better for the part. Oh, not even Nicolas Cage? Nobody can operate properly once they have that in their heads. Hey, if we brought it up, how come we're not traumatized? Issei Uye Ederle. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. And this was a, another recommendation, so thank you so much for that. Uh, this is the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee, and the address is very easy to remember. Elephants.com, <laughs> very, very simple. Uh, but let me tell you more about it. Uh, this is the nation's largest nas uh, natural habitat refuge developed specifically for endangered African and Asian elephants. The sanctuary operates on 2,700 acres and exists to provide captive, elephant, uh, captive elephants, I'm sorry, I can talk today, <laughs> with individualized care, uh, the companionship of a herd, and the opportunity to live out their lives in the safe haven dedicated to their well-being. Their goal is to raise public awareness of the complex needs of elephants in captivity and the crisis facing elephants in the wild. With a four-star rating on Charity Navigator, this is a charity that really cares about animals and you can play a really big part in helping them out. Uh, like I say, it's, you have no excuse, man. That's the easiest address to remember. So definitely check them out and see if you can uh, uh, donate or spread the word, any of that would be uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, so thank you for the recommendation. I'll just see you next time. Take care.